A built-in housing is actually part of the machine casing. In many cases, the shaft and the bearing are completely contained within the machine. To reach them, the casing must be taken apart. Built-in housings may also be solid or split. The solid types of built-in housings usually have removable end caps. Removing the end caps allows the bearing and the shaft to be taken out of the machine so that the bearing can be worked on. With a split-type built-in housing, there is a joint in the machine's casing that must be taken apart to get to the bearing. This allows the shaft and the bearing to be lifted out so that the bearing can be worked on. Bearing housings can be built either to allow a small amount of axial movement or to completely prevent axial movement. A housing that allows a small amount of axial movement is said to have a floating bearing. A housing that prevents all axial movement is said to have a fixed bearing. Both types of housings may be in the same machine. A shaft usually has several bearings spaced along its length. As a rule, only one of these is a fixed bearing. The others are usually floating bearings. All bearings need to be lubricated in order to reduce the amount of friction and wear that occurs during normal operation. Rolling contact bearings are usually lubricated with either oil or grease, and that's what we'll be focusing on during this part of the lesson. As we do, keep in mind that some bearings are permanently sealed and do not need additional lubrication. Your plant's maintenance procedures should specify which bearings require additional lubrication. We'll begin with lubrication methods that use oil. Generally, oil is used to lubricate bearings installed in machines that operate at a high speed under a light load. There are several different ways to provide oil to rolling contact bearings, including forced circulation, constant level oilers, oil baths, splash feed methods, and drip feed methods. A force circulation system is a common method for lubricating rolling contact bearings with oil. In this system, a pump supplies a steady supply of oil to the bearing. The pump sits on top of a rectangular reservoir called a sump. After leaving the bearing, the oil collects in a reservoir so that it can be pumped again. Oil filters in the system remove dirt and contaminants from the circulating oil. Coolers are also used to remove heat that the oil picks up from the bearing. Another way to lubricate bearings is with grease. Grease is generally used to lubricate bearings that are installed in machines that operate at slow speeds under heavy load, such as large circulating pumps. When adding grease to a bearing, it's important to use a grease that is compatible with the grease that is already in the bearing. Mechanics generally use one of three basic methods for greasing a bearing. They can grease the bearing with a grease gun, pack the bearing by hand, or use a grease cup. These methods are used only with bearings that are not sealed. Sealed bearings are permanently lubricated and they do not have to be greased. Many bearings that have to be greased are contained in housings that have grease fittings. A grease fitting is a small rounded projection on the housing that has a hole in it. To grease the bearing, a grease gun with a matching fitting is attached to the fitting on the housing. When this method is used, it is often necessary to remove the housing drain plug to allow old grease or excess grease to drain out as new grease is pumped in. Grease should be applied to the bearing while it is in motion to ensure that the grease will be evenly distributed. If the housing doesn't have a drain plug, the excess grease or old grease leaves the bearing through the shaft seals. In this case, it is very important to add grease slowly to the housing so that the shaft seals are not damaged. A good rule of thumb is to pump the grease gun no more than two or three times unless specific plant guidelines state otherwise. 